Right, I'm back working on the MX-5 again today and in this episode I'm going to be swapping out the stock injectors in this car for some RX-8 yellow injectors. Let's get on with it. So as you probably know by now, I'm working towards supercharging this MX-5 and a supercharger's primary function, much like a turbo, is to cram more air into an engine because more air equals more power. Well, sort of. You see, to make that power, you also need to be able to inject more fuel. And if your injectors can't deliver enough fuel, well, you've got yourself a problem. Now, the stock 1.8 VVT injectors in this car can deliver approximately, according to Mighty anyway, about 250 cc's of fuel per minute, which when we supercharge this car, specifically at high load and high RPM, won't be able to deliver enough fuel to deal with the increased amount of air that the engine is gonna see. So that's why I'm swapping in a set of these RX-8 yellow injectors, because these things can inject approximately 420 cc's of fuel. So about a 70% increase over the stock injector. Now these RX-8 yellows are a very common plug and play upgrade, budget upgrade anyway, for a turboed or supercharged MX-5, but you have to be careful that you get a genuine set of Denso injectors because there are a lot of Chinesium fakes floating about. Now I got these locally from a guy who was breaking his RX-8 so I'm pretty sure they are legit and as I mentioned in a previous episode and I've already covered it in the budget, these cost me £40. So that's enough about the why, let's get the stock injectors out of this car and get these ones in. All right, so to access the injectors in this 1.8 VVT engine, I actually need to remove the upper half of this intake manifold, which does complicate the job ever so slightly, but I'm sure we'll get in there one way or another. So the first thing I need to remove is the intake to the throttle body. Now, with my DIY intake, this is pretty easy. I just need to unplug the math sensor. Now, you might be thinking, why are you still running a math sensor? You're running a standalone ECU. You don't need it. Well, you're right, but actually, the MAF sensor, for now anyway, is providing a nice little adapter between the intake and the air filter, so that's why it's still there. So I'm going to unplug that. Next, I need to unplug the intake air temp sensor. We'll unplug that. Then we've got a breather hose underneath uh, the intake. I need to pull that off. Like so, now I need to remove the bracket from the inner wheel well here, so I just need a 10 millimeter spanner to do that. Okay, and then finally, I just need to undo this clamp holding the intake to the throttle body, and then this whole lot should just lift away. Okay, now we have access to the throttle body, which is good because that's the next thing I need to remove. So first up, I need to disconnect these two plugs on the throttle body here. One is for the throttle position sensor and the other is for the idle control valve. Okay, they're disconnected. The next thing is the throttle cable. So to do that, just hold the throttle wide open and then disconnect the cable. There we go. Okay, with that done, I can now remove the throttle body itself, which is just a case of undoing the four 12 millimeter fasteners at the front of the throttle body. Josh. Okay, with those four fasteners removed, the throttle body now can be pulled away from the inlet. It is still connected by a couple of coolant hoses, but that's fine because we're just going to lay it down here out of the way. There is a gasket as well which needs to be removed and then just put that somewhere safe. Okay, with the throttle body removed, I can now focus on getting the upper half of this intake manifold off. But first, there's a few vacuum lines and breather hoses to take care of. So we've got the map reference for the ME221, that needs to be removed. We've got another small vacuum line hidden down here behind the throttle body, that needs to be disconnected at one end. We've got this 
breather hose here and then we've got the vacuum line for the brake servo. All right, that's the vacuum lines and whatnot taken care of. So next up, there's this earth point here to remove. So this requires a 10 millimeter socket to get at. And then there's a little bracket back here as well, which connects the fuel rail to the top half of the intake manifold. So this needs to come off as well. And I think I'm gonna get that probably with a 10 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter spanner. So with that lot done, I can now remove the top half of this intake manifold, which requires me to remove five 12 millimeter fasteners from the top of the intake. So there's one, two, three here, and then two hidden away back here. And then finally, there's another two 12 millimeter bolts right underneath where the throttle body was located back here. So they need to come out as well. Okay, with those seven fasteners removed, I should be able to lift off the top half of this intake and with a bit of maneuvering, should be able to get it out of there. There we go, so that's the top half of this intake removed and now I have clear access to the fuel rail and the injectors underneath. Now there is a gasket on here, uh, but we're going to leave that where it is for now. But before I go any further, I'm going to cut a piece of cardboard and cover up this intake here because I do not want to drop anything down these intake ports here because that could potentially end up inside the engine and that would be a bad day. Right, so the injectors are pushed into this fuel rail and then they're also plugged into the wiring harness as well. So getting these things out is going to be pretty fiddly. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to go about it, but I think what I'm going to start off by doing is loosening off these three 12 millimeter bolts holding the fuel rail to the cylinder head. Now at this point be very careful because behind these bolts are three black plastic spacers that you really don't want to lose to the engine bay because we need to reuse those so be careful. Okay, I've loosened off those bolts, I haven't removed them, but now I can lift the fuel rail upwards, which hopefully is going to get me enough access underneath to be able to unclip this wiring harness with the pair of long nose pliers. If it's not, I'm probably going to have to go with the rough approach and just lever it off with the screwdriver. Well, that's one down. Okay, both of those clips have been disconnected. This one I managed to get with the long nose pliers. This one back here, uh, screwdriver was the only way I could get that unclipped. So now I can pull this harness back and I can uh, get my hand in there and unplug each of these injectors. Oh, right, that was pretty fiddly, but that's all the injectors unplugged. So now I can remove the fuel rail from the head. In fact, before I do it, I need to disconnect this. I think this is the EGR solenoid. I'm not sure, but we'll unplug that. Put that out of the way. So now I can undo these three 12 millimeter bolts, remove them, and then lift this fuel rail out of the head. Right, so these spaces are sat between the fuel rail and the head. So I'm going to lift this off and then hopefully they're not going to drop into the depths of the engine bay. That's one, two, three. Okay, we breathe a sigh of relief. All right, so now the fuel rail's loose. I can pull it upwards towards me to expose the injectors underneath.
Okay, so there we go. We've got the stock 1.8 VVT purple injectors. Now, before I remove these from the rail, first up, I need to remove an injector tip seal off each of these injectors because I need to reuse these with the RX-8 injectors. So these should just pull off the tip of each injector. One, two, three, and last but not least, number four. Right, it's been a long road to get here, but finally I can start swapping out these injectors. Now, you are going to lose some fuel at this point, but provided you've let the car sit for half an hour or more, there shouldn't be any pressure left in the fuel line. So at most, you're going to get a few drips. Now, to minimise fuel loss even further, I'm going to swap these injectors out one at a time. I'm going to start at cylinder number one and end with cylinder number four. And the great thing about the RX-8 injector is that it's physically identical to the MX-5 injector. So fitment is the same. Right, the injectors are sealed into the fuel rail with a small o-ring so they're just going to require a firm pull to get them out and then a firm push to get them reseated. So here we go. Okay, there we go, that's the purple injectors removed and we've got the yellows back in their place. I did lose a little bit of fuel there, but nothing, nothing too bad, so I'll just wipe it up with a rag. So before I install the injectors back into the head, of course I need to get my injector tip seals and the spacers in place. So the injector tip seals I'm actually not going to install on the tip of the injector. Instead, I'm going to place them in the recess in the cylinder head where the injectors are located so I'm just going to push them in there make sure they sit in nice and squarely do that to all those four seals and then I need three spacers of course so I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the back of the spacer and then drop it into the cylinder head where it locates and that grease should hopefully stick it in position and then I'm just going to maneuver the fuel rail and the injectors back into place and then get those bolts started Okay, so I've got the injectors located, now I'm just going to loosely put in the three 12mm bolts. Right now, before I reattach the harness to the fuel rail, I'm going to plug in these yellow injectors. Right, we've got the four RX-8 yellow injectors plugged back into the harness. Now I'm just going to shine a light into the back here to check that all those injector tip seals and spacers are in place and located correctly. And then once I'm happy that they are, I can nip down these three 12mm bolts to install that fuel rail and the injectors back into the cylinder head. Okay, that's the injector rail nipped back down, so now I just need to clip the harness back to the rail. Right, so that's the harness clipped back down to the rail, uh, oh, and we need to plug this back in. There we go, so that is the injector swap side of this job pretty much taken care of. So now I can move on to reinstalling the top part of this intake manifold and getting everything else back together. So obviously I need to start by removing my piece of cardboard and then I'm going to get the upper part of the intake into position and then tighten it down with the seven fasteners. Alright, so quite a lengthy job that, but everything's back together, we've got the RX-8 injectors installed, so now I need to hop into the car, I need to go onto Mighty, uh, the ME221 tuning software, and update our injector sizes, because we need to tell it that we're running bigger injectors so that it can compensate. So I'm going to hop into the car, hook up the laptop, and then do exactly that. 
Okay, we're in the MX-5 with Ellie. Me, Ellie, the world's neediest spaniel. Uh, so, we're in the MX-5, I've got the ignition on, I've hooked up the laptop, and I'm about to connect into Mighty. Okay, so now we're in Mighty on the start menu here. Straight away, we've got the injection driver menu. So, if you look down this box here, we've got primary injector size, cc's per minute. Now, you can see on the base map, it's set to 256. That was the stock injector, which obviously we've changed, and now we're going to put in there 420. Click enter, like that. Okay, now that is updated, so I can have an attempt at starting this car. Now, I'm going to cycle the ignition on and off a few times before I start the car, just to prime the fuel system and try and get as much air out as possible, and then I'm going to attempt to start it. Now, as soon as it starts, I'm going to go straight into the engine bay and check for any leaks because we don't want fuel spraying everywhere. So I'm going to move the dog out of the way because you're going to block my swift exit. Good girl. Right, so let's start the car and then check the leaks. Here we go. Started. Right, check for leaks. All right, there we go. We've got our RX-8 yellow injectors installed into the MX-5 and we've started the car and there's no leaks, which is always a bonus. So now I can be confident that this fuel system is going to be able to deliver enough fuel to compensate for the extra amount of air it's going to see when I install the supercharger. And in fact, speaking of installing the supercharger, that is literally the next job on the list. So we are getting really close now to getting this car supercharged. And don't forget, if you want to stay up to date with the rest of the build, subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed the video or you found it helpful, please do give it a thumbs up. Thanks, and I'll see you for the next episode.